class 2 composite illustrations are not as extensive as class 2 banana illustrations. But the cavity preparation design shown here is conventional class 2 composite preparation. For initiating the preparation, a wedge is placed so that the adjacent foot is not damaged during the preparation. The first step in preparation is occlusal cavity preparation. The preparation is usually done using diamond abrasive. This creates a roughened enamel for better bonding. Proximal box preparation initiated same as in amalgam by first forming a proximal ditch cut. Then the shell of proximal enamel is removed off. The proximal box is being refined so that any friable enamel is being removed. the removal of the friable enamel using hand instruments like enamel hatchet so the no remaining friable enamels remain in the proximal box an explorer is being used to test the clearance from the adjacent tooth usually proximal retention grooves are not required for composite restoration it is here proximal restoration Retention grooves used for preparing number 116 and tungsten carbide grooves. And this will be the final shape of a class 2 conventional composite preparation. Roughening up enamel wall is done using diamond abrasives so that there is better bonding of the composite restoration to the tooth surface. This will be the final preparation. And this is followed by application of matrix system. Here the matrix system employed is sectional matrix system. First the sectional matrix is supplied, followed by wedge placement so that there is tight adaptation of the matrix band to the tube surface. Then the sectional matrix ring is applied using rubber dam retainer forces. A slight burnishing of the retainer band will be required now at this stage. This could be done using a plastic filling instrument or back end of a spoon excavator as in amalgam restoration. This is for the aggressive application which will be first stage will be etchant application then for about 20 seconds. After 20 seconds the etchant is completely rinsed off and dried off. Once the agent has been rinsed and dried off, tinting bonding agent is applied using applicated tips thoroughly onto all parts of the cavity and followed by light curing for about 20 seconds or following the manufacturing instructions. Once the bonding agent has been light cured, Composite is placed in increments of not more than 2 mm. The first increment is placed in the deepest part of the cavity which will be the proximal box. Thorough condensation is required so that there will be no voids in composite respiration. Thoroughly condensed followed by light curing for about 40 seconds or depending on manufacturing instructions. The second increment of composite is now placed. Again, not more than 2 mm. Again, it is being thoroughly condensed. Followed by light curing for about 40 seconds.
The burnisher could also be used for defining the corresponding inclines and defining the shapes of corresponding inclines. Once the satisfied occlusion atom has been got, the composite is light Q. Now the retainer is being removed using rubber arm retainer forces. And so the sectional matrix is also peeled off. Because usually the sectional matrix will be tightly adhered to a composite. The matrix which is now removed. Removed by further curing of the gingival areas. Now the quartering is done using a football shaped tungsten carpet board to refine the margin ridges and also the cuspal inclines. The tungsten carbide work is usually 18 to 24 foot finishy carbide work. A destroyed PI power can be used to remove any flashes of composites that is protruding out of the cable surface margin. Tungsten carbide work finishing is continued. So the small refinements in the marginal ridges is being now done here. And the PI can used to remove any flashes of composite. Polishing discs are being used to remove and finish the proximal surfaces of the composite restoration, which are inaccessible to the tungsten carbide bars. The disc should be used carefully so the adjacent tooth is not being touched or damaged. A BPB number 12 could also be tried out or used to remove the flashes of amalgam in the proximal gingival areas where the bars or this could not be entered. The BP blade application should be held very carefully. The disc application is continued. Now the controlling procedure is almost done. And the small for finer refinements are being now done with the bows. Occlusal anatomy has been covered as closely as possible to the natural occlusal anatomy. During this finishing and contouring procedure, we must be careful that the too much of composite is not removed and leaving an underfilled composite restoration. surface margin which is being now removed. So a composite placement has been done properly. This contouring and finishing procedure will be done as quickly as possible. If too much of excess composite has been placed in the composite placement procedure, and the contouring and the finishing procedure will be a laborious one. Let's go to use to evaluate the discrepancy in tables of response. Finishing is done using composite finishing stones of different grids, starting from medium grids and going to finer grids to import the final smoothness or polishness and the shininess to the composite restoration. The proximal areas could be finished using rubber cups where the polishing stones could not be accessed. The final shininess is slowly being imported on the composite illustration. The 
explore or use the evaluate shininess, smoothness and this will be the finished composite.